Wow. Holy Hello. shit, the OCG ban list. Yeah. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to um welcome back to uh the Wizards Master Duel Roundtable. I'm your host, Evan from High Media TV, and joined by my illustrious panelists, the 8,021st Digital Warrior, Digi, as well as our illustrious well. moderator. As well as our illustrious moderator, not Chara. And, uh... Good God. We have, we, we have some updates. Uh, what the first, kind of updates? which normally we would start with, uh, Master Duel, obviously. But... Uh, I want to talk about uh, some things that came out today that were announced on Twitter, courtesy of the, uh, pull it up, YGO organization on Twitter. God bless them. Uh, we have a few different cards that have that were announced today. No, it wasn't them. It was the other motherfuckers. God damn it. Bear with While me. Up, I would like to uh, point, uh, mention something that came out two days ago that will actually most likely influence Master Duel. What's that? The uh, OCG ban. Yeah, they ban they they semi uh, Max C. That's not the most important thing. I could give less of a fuck about that. Anyways, so first off on the OCG ban list, all the Dragon Rulers are at three again. Neat. Plush yeah. Fire Fits Arata is at three. Quick Fix is at three. Hmm. Zeus well, is at three again. Don't know why it was ever limited because everyone always everyone always ran one anyways. Uh, Magic Specter Unicorn Kirin got put back to three, so Magic Specters are fully back. Random Regeki uh, unlimit. My friend Purely also back to being unlimited as with Lightning Storm. Ooh, we might actually get Lightning Storm at three then in Master Duel because Master Duel likes to follow the OCG man lists. It does. Uh... Uh, it was, and uh, I found the thing I was looking for. It was uh, ready and, for a duel, but continue. Oh, let me continue. So Eva also got put back to two. We knew that was coming, though. That was kind of reflected in the TCG ban list as well. Your top is now at two. Actually, no, Eva's still at one. Anyways, Ter uh, Teratop went to two from one. Pancratops is at two. Interesting. Uh, Invoker is at two now instead of one. Uh, Luster Pendulum, the fl uh, Draco Slayer got put at the two. And now here's one from the age old days that I wasn't expecting to come to two. What? Golden Sark is that it's Golden Sarks at more than one? It's at two now. No shit. Are they using yeah. the semi list as like a quarantine zone, you think, just to see how this kind of Golden Sark was at one? So, uh, who knows? Maybe. Fusion Destiny got put from one to two. That doesn't surprise me. The errata for it well, killed it. it. Branded o opening got put to two. Oh, interesting. Branded players. Max are... of course being put to two. Yep, 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 yep. Nightmare Throne got put to two. Ooh. Goes right. in match went from three to two. And now we're gonna look at the limits. Dryden came off the ban list in OCG. Makes sense. At one. Hmm. Masterpiece, the Draco Slayer King, King, came to one. Makes sense. Draco Slayers are an ass now. I'm skipping that one to talk about later, because that's the biggest one. Uh, Snatch Steel got put to one. Yep, that's. I'm not surprised by that. They're getting in line with the TC. And now, now. For the, uh, now for the meta hits. The spicy ones, yes. Diabelle Star to one. Ooh. Top Lar to one. Okay, yeah, that, that tracks. Tempai Dragon Chandra to one. Wow, okay. Phantom of Ubel to one. Yeah, no, nah, that needed to happen. Fiendsmith's Track to one. Damn, the Fiendsmith hits keep happening. Bonfire to one. This ah, is just nice Wow. Fiendsmith Bonfire. Engraver to one. Ooh, oh, so they're hitting this shit hard, hard. Okay. And the last of the limits. Oh, boy. And the last of the limits, the most important one, Red Eyes Dark Dragoon to one. Really? They're Damn. bringing back Dragoon. So we might Honestly, be seeing him in Master Duel. Maybe I don't know. Possibly. I I think I think that like Dragoon is a I think. And Beatrice is banned. 
Yeah, that need that's that's good good fucking friends. Um uh, yeah, so when Sue's Fiend Smith comes out in Master Duel is when Fiend Smith is would be Trust's ban. That's probably for the best. Yeah, I think that's all pretty cool. I think Dragoon is, you know, it's a it's a pain in the ass card, but like there are plenty of removal options that take it into account. Um I think that's fine, by and large. Um it's you know, it's one of those cards that is an instant that instantly dies to super poly, for one thing, um, and among other removal options. So like I don't think it's like as scary as it was back then. I think AirPod Strap Goo is like not a deck that's gonna be seeing as much play. But we'll see what happens. Um I would like to take the new segment for a second and I would like to talk about uh we have some new uh, some of the new support for a particularly interesting archetype coming in Rage of Abyss. You guys may not know this about me, but when I was starting to get back into Yu-Gi-Oh! and I started playing Yu-Gi-Oh! specifically on um, like simulators and stuff just to try and like, you know, try other decks that weren't just Gravekeepers, one before I settled on should ultimately settled on Shadals, one of the decks that I tried and genuinely liked was Six Samurai. Hmm. And it also just so happens that we have new six samurai support. Five cards at present to be to, to start. So I'm gonna start with the main deck cards first, the spell, and then we're going to go into the two new synchro cards. The first one is uh, Anarchist Monk of the Six Samurai, which states if you control a six samurai monster other than this this card named, you can special summon this card from the hand. You know, it's only that's a once per turn. You can only in all of its effects are once per turns. If this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can add one six samurai quick play spell from your deck to your hand. They also added a new quick play spell. We'll get to that. A six samurai monster that was synchro summoned using this card gains this effect. The levels of all monsters you control, your opponent controls, are reduced by one. So you know, that doesn't really... That that synchro effect doesn't do much. But it's interesting. It's a level 3, 500 attack, 0 defense, warrior, tuner, monster. The next one we have is Tactical Trainer of the Six Samurai. If you control... It basically has the same effect as the last one, where it can special summon itself from hand. That's a hard one. Those are both... All of its effects are once per turn. And it has, and you can says you can only use each of the following effects on once per turn. If this card is sent from the field of the graveyard, you can add one six strike card from your deck or graveyard to your hand. A six samurai monster that was synchro summoned using the skin's effect. The, that effect being monsters your opponent controls lose five hundred attack. So whatever. So the first of the two um, uh, synchro monsters are is a Legendary Lord Six Samurai Enshi, which is a level seven uh, synchro monster, one tuner, one plus non-tuners. Warrior monsters you control gain 500 attack and defense during the battle phase only. You can only use each of the effects once per turn. If this card synchro summoned, you can banish any number of six samurai monsters from your graveyard, then target that many monsters your opponent controls, return those monsters to the hand. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can special summon one of your banished six samurai monsters. So one of the things that six samurai has been fiending for for a while, pure six samurai, is more interactions outside of Gateway of the Six, which is limited to one. For good reason, by the way. Uh, and uh, the spell card six strike double assault, so it can be searched by two the two new main deck monsters, Apply one of these effects, or if you control two or more six samurai monsters, you can apply both effects in sequence. So the so we're seeing a callback to the old days of six samurai, where you need to have two or more of them on the field to like activate more of their effects. Special summon one six samurai monster with two thousand or less attack from your hand or graveyard. Change one mon. Oh, and the second effect is change one monster your opponent controls with two thousand or less attack to face down defense position. During your main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, then target one six samurai monster in your graveyard, add it to your hand. You can only use one six strike double assault effect per turn and only once that turn. Lastly, is the new is the is the new level seven level six, my bad warrior, 
of Legendary Lord Six Samurai Shi N, which is one warrior tuner and one and in and, and, and it requires six samurai monsters as the non-tuners. If this card is synchro summon, you can add one six samurai monster or Shien effect monster from your deck to your hand. This is huge. This deck is fiending for searching. It is it is very hot like unless you like ha open certain cards, it's it's very difficult, if not impossible, to search specific cards. This is fucking huge. Also, syn doing synchros in this deck is surprisingly easy. So. This is, you know, access to search. This is big. Um, once per turn, when your opponent activates a monster effect, this is quick of quick effect. You can negate the activation, and if you do destroy that card, this all it also if this card would be destroyed by a battle or card effect, you can destroy one monster you control instead. So this card is huge because it does a couple things. One, it adds much needed negation and searching all on a pretty de on a decent body that has protection. This is this is big for the deck. This isn't going to make it a meta threat, but this definitely is support that brings a uh, six samurai into the modern age and I love it. So yeah, that was my spiel. All right. Any uh any more news, Chara, on your end? Chara. Chara. You there? Did you did you go shit and not tell us? <laughs> Honestly, that wouldn't surprise I, I, me. I just checked his message and he said BRB for bathroom. Keep going. Hold on. Oh, there he is. <laughs> But uh, yeah, um, Char, is there any uh news? More news on your end? Nope. Nope. All right, moving on. Um, Rabonga. Yeah. Uh, as far as as far as uh, how's the duelist cup going for you guys? I want to die. Haven't uh, really enlisted in it, so I don't know. I you see that poster over there. I'm gonna take a bath with it. I've been I've been playing Libromancer Voices Voice. I've been having an okay time. Oh, but... then you switched over the fucking shotgun roulette. Yeah, I, I lost mm. in a way that was frustrating. It it it, it do be like that. <laughs> oh yeah. It definitely do be like that, don't it? I think for me. I don't think I, given where my life is right now, I don't think it's, uh, I don't think I have the, uh, you know, the luxury of time to, uh, spend a fuck off amount of time, uh, grinding in the, um. I just want my gems. You just want the gems? I want to get the, the five tickets that uh, I get at level 16, I think. That might be when oh. I peace out. If you want to talk, oh, I do have some news. Uh, we're getting new moon, uh, Mimigul cards in the TCG soon. Really? That's fun. Mimigul? It's, it's a, it, it's, it's a, it's a rogue Level flip. It's a, it's a rogue flip deck that is very cute and quaint in its play style. It's, uh, they're just funny. They're just fun. They're just, you know. So what decks fun. are you guys working on building in Mexico right now? Um, I'm still, I'm still chilling on the one you made for me. Yeah. He, how, he has how, how much, Digi. How much uh, progress have you made in it, Digi? I honestly do not remember. I'm working it on has been a while ago. since last Master Duel. At least since I've been doing any grinding. Officially. Okay. For me, I um, am very much content with the voiceless voice cards. Um, I think for me, it is very, very much, uh, I, I love a, a solid ritual art based archetype. So, you know, the fact that voice is voice, despite not being, you know, the same tiered meta threat as like a Ubel or even certain Snake Eyes builds, a Master Duel, I do enjoy playing it to a very, you know, significant degree. So for me, I, I'm kind of I rocking like with that for the time being. 
yeah, Ragnarok it does it like does kind of suit you. It is also like a very very uh, fun and interesting deck for sure. If you guys were interested, go for it. Oh, be nice. yes. oh plan uh, pile. Plant pile uh, with right Ragnarok a um, uh, uh, pl uh, plant link. That's nice. Actually, that actually makes perfect sense. Plant link. Ragnarok fits perfectly into. Um, you know, plant plant link. If I'm being so fucking for real, you want to know something interesting about this deck? Uh, what's, what's interesting that? Interesting about it, Dara. It's almost a copy of uh, Jess's deck from what WCS. No shit. I love Jess. She's fucking great. So I'm just working on copying this and make master dueling it. Also, look what I randomly pulled from the legacy packs. Let's see. What'd you pull? Oh, a one day of peace. One day of peace. Oh, I hate it. Well, it's a decent. It's also, a good stun. What's up? I've made some improvements to my track deck stacks throughout the duelist cut. Oh. Ooh. Book of Eclipse. Ooh. They can't activate their effects if they're fucking face down. Hmm. <laughs> I also randomly pulled this trying to get some more big plant pile cards, so I, I just slotted it in. Yeah, did you know the black goat got added, uh, was added in this pack, by the way, Evan? Because I didn't. What does that do again? Declare a monster card name. This turn, you your player can special summon monsters with that original name, except from the graveyard. Or, and, or... You can banish this card from the graveyard and declare a monster card name. Uh, this turn, neither player can activate the effects of monsters on that field with that original name. Hmm. That's really, really good for good choke cards. Means stay in Labyrinth, I presume. Oh, uh, any trap deck. I saw... I saw fucking, uh... Like, uh, so... Funny a thing I can do in, in my first turn. Like, if I have Holotea in my hand. Hmm. I can set Holotea. Activate and then activate its effect by discarding black. Activate it so it can special summon it by discarding black goat. Giving me black goat in my graveyard. Immediately. Because it's mainly the second effect that you want to use. Or if you are running transaction rollback, you use the first effect. Because transaction rollback is transaction rollback. Yeah. Because transaction rollback is a quick effect, which is faster than. Normally, what black goat is? Yeah, it's spell speed three, I think. Yeah. Made a slight adjustment in my extra deck. I got Celine Snapper now. So the other trap trick card. Hmm. My flavor has been pulling in work, so honestly. Uh, just real quick, I recognize that this is a Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast, so before we go over to Digi segment, I do want to, uh, take a quick second to acknowledge that the Magic players are unwell, folks. Oh, what happened? Magic players? So, magic gathering? Watsi, the people that run Magic, to the ban list. Mm. They did a ban list. On Commander. On Commander, no less. And the cards that they banned were expensive. Like <laughs> magic expensive, by the way. You know, Yu-Gi-Oh! card like we're like Fiend Smith is like an expensive ass package of cards. But, you know, people like a world's magic deck is like 10 times the cost on average of a world's Yu-Gi-Oh deck. It is just a much more expensive card game. And Commander is the most successful version that people play. And the cards that they got rid of were expensive and also were linchpins specifically for certain colors to be even able to participate in uh, you know, that Higher format. Tier. Yeah, exactly. 
So, you know, the, there are people who have who spent, you know, $2,500 on cardboard, like, weeks, a few weeks ago, and, like, are now out that fucking money. Now, a reminder that in Commander, uh, or in Magic decks, you can play four copies of a card. It, so, you know, people are very much very much unhappy with this now grant now great so to bring it back to Yu-Gi-Oh, digi my friend it is now time for your segment hand cam please all right all right all right perfect perfect one second let's see how are we looking how are things looking good are we looking all right That's all right correct. perfect got got my jacket right here all right, so on to the first pack of the final Infinite Forbidden I got. All right, let's see. The highlight of this pack is Spell Card Monster Reborn. Yuck. Eh. Look pretty. I mean, it's 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 another dupe. I'm ar I already saw a whole bunch of dupes from these other packs. And I'll let's you see. You buy a bunch of boxes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Very true. Very true. All right. Now for the highlight of this pack. Exod Fires of Rage. Honestly, it, honestly, it's another dupe. But hey, anything works well with Exodia with this one. All right. On to pack. Number three, let's see. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? We have. Oh! Uh, come on. No. It... There we go. Another uh, Fine Smith's Requiem. Bad. You only need one, but that's still good. Yeah. Mm hmm. Alright. I'm so just sad that you were never. You never got a copy of Engraver. Yeah. Unless you get one right. and... now. On to the last one. And the last one is Spell Card Soul Exchange. Eh. Eh. Meh. So many dupes. I can't wait to the, the cards for the Master Duel when they eventually do. And now the deck has grown to be this massive. Fat. Mm-hmm. It's a fat deck. So safe to say, if I go up against anyone with this many cards, I'm I'm guaranteed to win in some capacity. But I, I think guess. there's a limit to how many cards you have, or that uh, you yeah, need 50. to have. Sixty, you said. Yeah. And of course, I still got all these token cards right here. Not really much of. Not really much of showcasing. All right, so now with Infinite Forbidden all the way out of the way, this will be the final Infinite Forbidden I do. And the only two other boxes at my store are the Retro Boxes and Light of Destruction instead of mm -hmm. Legacy of Destruction. So we got like three Lights of Destruction over at the, um, over at the shop, and then the rest of them are just Retro. Okay. Interesting. Uh, on that note, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for joining us for this uh, roundtable. Uh, we are now, we have moved, uh, most of the HI Media TV podcasts have moved from Spreaker over to Spotify. Upside, I don't have to spend. On Spotify? I'm on, well, I'm, I'm hosted on Spotify now. Uh, Upside, Ooh. I no longer nice. uh, upside. You can now watch the the video version of the podcast on Spotify or or, or wherever you get your video enabled pods. And and downside, I don't make any money from podcasts anymore, which is very sad. Uh, but more video, more options for you to watch. Very very good. So thank you so much for watching, everybody. And I will send you off to uh, pre recorded Evan to the loop. Hey. Thanks for watching. If you want to, you want to talk to me outside of this video, outside of live streams, or just be a join the community and be a part of it, you can do so at hibmedia.gg/discord. Discord links there. We'd love to have you. And 
given the financial situation of the economy right now, I know this is a tall ask, but if you have the scratch to, to spare, please consider donating and becoming a supporter at himedia.gg slash tip. All of our perks are serviced through our Discord channel, including early access videos, exclusive videos, and more. Your generosity is a blessing, and a dollar a month is a boon to my bank account. Thank you so very much for watching. I appreciate you, and have a great day.